for example three, um, skip number two because three is a little bit more important here. Uh, whenever you graph absolute value inequalities, it's just like graphing inequalities, except you are going to end up with a V shape. Okay, anytime you have your absolute values, don't forget that you will always end up with a V shape. Always. You shouldn't get anything else. Now this could be either opening up or opening down. Uh, the best thing to do whenever you're graphing an inequality is just to first set whatever is in between or in your absolute values. So set the expression um, inside the absolute values. So the absolute value bars equal to zero. So when you do that, in this case, you find out that you get just x equals zero. The reason you do that is because this is going to be the middle point of your graph. If you get a V shape, okay, you want to try to find out where the bottom of that V is. All right, you want to figure out where this <coughs> bottom of that V is. So by doing this first step, by taking whatever is inside your absolute values and setting it equal to zero, that is going to help you figure out your table because then next you want to make a table of values and when you make your table we're going to just plug in five points here so we're going to say x and y plug a zero in the middle negative one on the left, negative two on the right, one and two. <clears throat> so if you plug a negative two in, if you plug a negative two in here, you are going to end up getting absolute value of negative two plus one. Well, the absolute value of negative two is two, plus one is three. So you're gonna go back two, up three, put a dot. Plug a negative one in. Well, the absolute value of negative one is one, plus one is just two. So you're gonna go back one up two. Same thing for zero. Well, the absolute value of zero is just zero. So zero plus one is one. So you go zero, one. Plug a one in there. The absolute value of one is just one. So one plus one is two. Notice we are starting to get our V shape back. If you plug a two in there, you're gonna get a three. So you go to the right two, up the three. So then what you have is this pretty little V shape here. And we should have tried to figure out if this was gonna be shaded above or below, um, or if it's dashed or solid. Well, that line's not very good. Undo that sucker. Um, this line should be, it's gonna be dashed or solid. Well, look at your sign once again. That is, a less than or a greater than, so that means that this should be a dashed line. So if I go up here, that means I'm going to need to get my eraser again. And we're just going to go through and make this a dashed line. If you mess up on this part, you're going to miss half a point. Uh, easiest way, before I showed you how you can test a point, another way to that I want to show you how to figure out if you need to shade above or below is to look at your sign again. Um, this says less than. Well, if you have a less than or a less than or equal to, then you're trying to figure out where are my y values getting smaller. Is it going to be below my line or to be everything above my line? Well, y's get smaller as you go down. So that means you would want to shade everything that is below your graph. So if we shade everything that is below the graph, that would be everything down this way. Everything below the V. So we down, around, over this way, up. I usually like this section because I get a color. I don't know about you, you guys. Some of you are like, oh, man, hey, pretty colors. All right, anyway, here we go. So that is what your graph should look like. I hope you enjoyed example three. I know with all these pretty colors, I thoroughly enjoyed it.